千里之行，始于足下。A journey of a thousand miles begins beneath the feet. We now gather in the Tao to travel the journey together. Welcome to Tao Talks with Eric Lin, where we take a deep dive into the Tao Te Ching by Lao Tzu. I would like to extend a warm welcome to you. Thank you for joining us. I would like to invite you to center your thoughts and direct your attention to this moment in time, to the here and now, to be fully present and mindfully aware, as we all ready ourselves for this sacred process in the Tao. With one another, as we discussed previously, the chapter title is "Favor and Disgrace." By now, we all know this is about the positive and negative feedback that we get in life. The positive and negative are a complementary duality represented by the yin and yang symbol. Feedback is a general term covering all possible reactions, verbal, attitudes, and so on. To handle the positive and the negative, Lao Tzu have very specific advice for us. We were able to finish our discussion of the chapter line by line. Let's do a quick recap on our discussion before moving on to the paraphrase in the full circle to really finish everything up. Here is the chapter, sixteen lines. We were able to divide this up into. Multiple sections, and with the highlighting, you can see how those section divisions came to be. So we were able to explore deeply into both favor and disgrace. The key insights that we discussed previously, as a recap, is about how. All the good and bad things that come in our direction, all the praise, all the criticism, they are hitting us at the outer layers of the self. A personal attack may hurt one's feelings, but notice that feelings come and go. Feelings are transient. Feelings don't last; they don't have lasting reality. Unlike the true self, the true self is the point, the singular point that is you. It's the you that never changes, no matter what. Nothing can be added to it. Nothing can be taken from it. So. A disapproval that comes in, it's impacting your thoughts, your feelings, which change. It may also impact public perception. That is to say, other people see the disapproval, they may agree or disagree. Either way, it also doesn't last, and it also does not have any impact. On the true self. Same thing with everything else, even the things that we like, like compliments. Compliments will hit us in the ego, the sense of self-importance. The impact that it may have is that it may inflate the ego. The head may swell up. Become too big for our own good. 
But that again is transient. It comes and goes. It's changing all the time. No matter how much your ego swells up, it will have no impact, no change on the true self in the sense that you are still you. So recognizing external stimuli and the layers of the self that it's impacting helps us determine the best approach, the best way to handle favor and disgrace. And when we talk about the self, we were very clear, I think, on the way that Lao Tzu expressed the concept. Lao Tzu referred to both the physical self and the mental self. The physical self is the body. The mental self is the mind. Lao Tzu talked about how the self brings about a lot of problems and issues for all of us. And we know this to be true just based on our own experience. Having a body in the physical world, it allows us to function as a physical entity. That's great. But the body is subjected to changes, possible injuries, sickness, aging. It does definitely bring about a lot of problems. In a previous chapter, when Lao Tzu talked about the five colors, the five sounds, the five flavors, he was definitely talking about the temptations and distractions, the stimuli that the physical body is subjected to. And that applies to all of us. This chapter, Lao Tzu pivots more to the mental self, the mind, as I mentioned, the ego. Definitely, that gets us into a lot of problems as well. We may have insecurities that becomes fearful, afraid of criticism. We may feel disconnected from our underlying fundamental connection with everything else. We may be deluded and place more value on material things. These are all possible ways for the mental self or the mind to get us into trouble. The fortunate thing for us is that by becoming aware of the possible misfortune that can be brought about by the mental and physical selves, we are much better prepared to handle them appropriately. We can transition from being self-centric to being selfless. And that is the direction that Lao Tzu wanted to take this chapter. The slide that we use to talk about that is summarized here. When one is self-centered, one cannot help but be startled to get favors from other people. Like, wow, me? Are you talking about me? Oh, thank you. And the self-centered person is afraid of losing the good opinions and also fearful of becoming criticized and very anxious to lose the criticism. Over time, in the course of life, this leads to one misfortune after another, one bad judgment after another, suboptimal results over a lifetime, just disasters and misfortune. What the sages are able to do and what we should emulate is that they transition 
from being self-centered to being selfless. And specific terms with that, as you can see from Yoshen to Wu Shen. The sages transcending the self-centeredness, they're glad to have approval. They are aware of criticism, but they don't let themselves become overwhelmingly dependent on the good or bad opinions of others, becoming slaves, in a sense, to external validation. So what about us? Do we also live for that external validation too much? If so, it's time to take another look at that. Because only when you are able to transition the care and value and love that you have for yourself, transition that to valuing, caring, and loving the greater self, a group, an organization, your family, social circle, a cause that you believe in. Only when you're able to make that transition from the self to the greater whole should you be trusted with responsibilities. That's the whole point. So the story we talked about last time about a king who was compassionate, who placed the interest of the people ahead of his own desires for power. He was able to let that go. And as we heard last time, as Lao Tzu predicted, this brought about a great outcome, no misfortune, being away from danger, and we can all learn from that. So that is the recap from our discussions from before. Now we are ready for the paraphrase. So we're about to paraphrase Dao Te Ching 13 as a way to demonstrate understanding by expressing the original meaning with our own words. So here is 13. We start right out with the basic premise of Dao Te Ching 13 about favor and disgrace, making one startled and fearful, and that this is linked to the self, leading us to great misfortune. So how can we convey this? This is like a preview of the substance of this chapter. Here is the paraphrase that I would like to offer. There is saying that both favorable and unfavorable words cause fear because our biggest problem is the ego that reacts to these words. So as I mentioned, these are the main statements which then Lao Tzu goes on to explain in detail. He starts out with this concept in section two about favor and disgrace. He explains what it means, and he's very specific in saying that it's both that make one fearful, even what we usually think of in a positive way like praise. And it's not just gaining the praise, it's also losing. It's not just gaining, getting the criticism, but also losing the criticism. So he is transcending beyond what ordinary people think about good and bad feedback. Here is the paraphrase I want to offer to express what he's saying. How can both favorable and unfavorable words cause fear? We think positive opinions are highly desirable, while negative opinions are to be avoided. 
we become so invested in them that gains and losses, whether positive or negative, become very big deals to us. We worry about them all the time, before and after judgment. That is why we say both favorable and unfavorable words cause fear. So I think that explains exactly what Lao Tzu meant. Then the next section is where Lao Tzu links the misfortunes that we come across in life to the self. That sense of being self-centric, becoming too invested in one's own self-importance, the ego. So here's the paraphrase I want to offer for his explanation. How is it that our biggest problem is the ego? Think about the troubles we get into when the ego is out of control. When we receive criticism, we feel shock and anger because it is painful. When we receive praise, we feel unsure and even more anxious because we want more so badly. These issues all go away when we dial down the sense of self-importance. That is why we say our biggest problem is the ego. Now the final section. This is where Lao Tzu turns, to, turns from praise and criticism to the bottom line, which is about how if the self is the cause of problems, what about those like the sages themselves who are able to transcend that? Well then, they are able to take on responsibilities. So here is the, the paraphrase I want to offer for that. Therefore, the greatest rulers are the ones who can transcend the ego. Instead of being concerned about themselves, they feel only concerned for the greater good. Similarly, the greatest individuals are the ones who love something greater than themselves. The family, the team, or community, they are the ones who can truly take charge for the good of all. Wise words from Lao Tzu, and I think very applicable and true to life. In my own experience, in my life, I have definitely seen great leaders who are selfless, as well as many leaders who are very much wrapped up in their own ego. So lastly, we have the full circle discussion. This is where we link the end of the chapter to the beginning and extract the final bit of wisdom from it. For 13, in the very last lines, Lao Tzu says, one who loves the self as the world can be entrusted with the world. And specifically, that is saying transcending the self so that however much you care and love yourself, that is how you care and love the greater whole, which may be an organization or a group, a family, or a team. So we're going to go ahead and link this back to the beginning to see the greatest misfortune is the self. So this is the beginning statement that Lao Tzu opens up this chapter with. We then link it back, forming the full circle, and then we see the message. It is saying to us, the person who can transition from caring for oneself, being selfish, to caring for the world, being selfless, is the one who can take on great responsibilities. 
This is the Tao. It is always about being of service to something greater than oneself. So that is our inspiration. It is our aspiration. By learning more about the Tao, I hope that all of us can put ourselves in a position to be of service to the greater self, other people, a greater cause. And so to end this particular chapter, I'll just reiterate the final quote from Lao Tzu. One who loves the self as the world can be entrusted with the world. Inspirational words. And this concludes our discussion of Tao Te Ching 13. Our meeting has come to an end, but the journey continues on. Until next time, May the Tao fill you with peace and happiness.